girl, Crystal P, the Beauty MP, and I'm back with another video. And if you've been watching my last couple of videos, you know will know that I am out of town and I am in the sun and I'm hot right now. But I wanted to do one very last video, and that is the side effects. I'm sorry, the risk associated with hormone therapy. I did another video on the side effects of hormone therapy, which are different from the risk. So side effects are something that may be um, come on after you start the therapy, but they go away, especially as your hormones start getting more and more balanced. But risk um, of hormone therapy are different things where the hormone therapy can cause other things to happen. Um, and I just want to go over some of those risks. And really, there are many risks involved with hormone therapy. Um, and that is because it is great for everyone. We do want to be cautious of when we start hormone therapy. Um, and that is within 10 years of menopause. So if you started menopause, if you went into menopause at 51, we would really like to start you on hormone therapy by the age of 61. Um, and if we it's case by case basis that we will start someone after 10 years, but that person has to be a relatively healthy individual. What we don't want to do is start hormone therapy with someone who has pre a lot of pre existing conditions, a lot of uncontrolled um, diabetes, uncontrolled um, heart disease, uncontrolled hypertension. We don't want to start hormone therapy on those patients um, later, 10 years post menopause, um, because of the great effects that hormone therapy has on people, but can also be bad for that group of people. And why that is, is for instance, hormone therapy with your testosterone, estrogen, it is a vasodilator. I'm sorry, a vaso, yeah, a vasodilator. So what that means is it opens up your blood cells, right? And that's great because we want um, our blood cells to be open, not constricted, but we want it to be open so that blood can flow through it freely without any issues. Now, what happens when a person is in their 60s, in their 70s, and they have uncontrolled um, cholesterol, meaning that they have a lot of plaque buildup around their blood vessels, or they have um, uncontrolled hypertension, or they have uncontrolled um, heart issues. We don't want to open up those blood vessels, which would be great in any other circumstances, but we don't want to open them up to a person who has a lot of plaque buildup in their vessels, because what's going to happen is it's going to open up, and you could let one of those, um, that plaque buildup and that fat and cholesterol, it could dislodge, and that's what causes a heart attack or stroke. That is why um, previous studies of hormone therapy got such a bad rap, is because they were um, monitoring women who were in their 70s and well well beyond the years where they should have started hormone therapy, or if they did start, they should have been um, monitored and regulated, but they were just starting hormone therapy and they were starting at later years of age. And then type, those types of things happen because we're opening up those blood vessels, which for a healthy individual would be a great thing or a person who has um, high blood pressure, but it's maintained by medicine, you know, like one or two medications. Uh, we don't want to start opening up those blood vessels and getting things like strokes and things like that. Um, another thing is estrogen, um, certain types of estrogen receptor breast cancers and cancers. We may want to be cautious in doing hormone therapy because um, we are putting estrogen in you. And if those uh, cancers thrive off of estrogen, your estrogen levels are going to go up and it's going to grow. Um, hormone therapy does expose things that may not have been exposed. Some can think of that, of that as a bad thing. I think of it as a good thing because we can catch it early. So what that means is hormone therapy and when we're giving you estrogen and say that you have um, a breast cancer that likes estrogen, it's going to grow pretty fast or even a breast cancer period, it's going to grow more rapidly because you have that extra extra estrogen in you. But that's why if you have a good provider, they're making sure that you get your mammograms on time. They're making sure you're healthy. They're making sure that you are uh, you are verbalizing to your um, primary practitioner, keeping them in the loop, and that they are able to get you a biopsy if we say you need one. They're able to order a mammogram if we say that you need one, um, because that way, if you start to grow that cancer, for instance, that likes the estrogen, we're going to catch it quick. I'm going to teach you how to do your breast exam so that you're catching um, those lumps quickly so we can get them biopsy, we can get you a mammogram, and we can see what's happening versus that cancer growing without having the hormone therapy, it's growing very slowly in your body. Who knows if you even have the education or the provider who's staying on you to making sure you get your mammograms and making sure that you're doing your breast exams and things like that. So that's why it's very important to be followed when you're getting hormone therapy. And if you have history of those estrogen um, 
uh, receptor type breast cancer. So we are going to take pause of that and we may send you to get some clearance before we will give you hormone therapy. Um, other side effects um, with men, sometimes if you're getting testosterone and your testosterone level is too high, then testosterone can be converted to estrogen. That will give men mood swings and will give them breast tenderness and will give them things that men shouldn't have because men shouldn't have estrogen levels that high. So that is a risk for men, but that's why we will suggest that men take a supplement called DIM and DIM um, helps to block the testosterone from converting to estrogen. So men won't have that issue. And another thing is that your practitioner should be following men because um, hormone therapy and testosterone can also make, um, in some men, it can make their blood thick. Um, and in that case, we will send them to either donate some blood, get some of that blood off. Um, it's pretty it's pretty simple to extra step. If you looked at my side effect video, then you will know that um, none of these um, side effects or risk unless you are someone dealing with the estrogen positive receptor of breast cancer. Um, most of the time people want their hormones, they feel great on their hormones and they the side effects and risks don't bother them. Um, so that's a risk for, uh, risk for men. Another risk for women um, is also vaginal bleeding. So while that is a side effect, um, we typically like to see your vaginal bleeding slowing up within um, 10 to 14 days of starting estrogen therapy. Um, now, we might ask you to increase your progesterone that you're taking to stop that bleeding. But if the bleeding continues, then we will most likely ask your doctor to get a vaginal ultrasound um, and see what's going on in there. Because like I said, estrogen does aggravate um, things that are already going on with you. Um, um, not necessarily fibroids, but it could be fibroids in the, um, the vein of bleeding, or we will, um, we will see where you at, are at and maybe you have undiagnosed endometriosis or you have undiagnosed, um, cysts or you have undiagnosed fibroids. Those are things that we will, um, question you about when you come in and get your, um, do your consultation. We'll go through that. But if you start therapy and you start bleeding and the bleeding doesn't stop in 14 days, then we will ask you to go get checked out. From your doctor because something could be going on because estrogen likes to have a healthy um, uterus and if your uterus is not healthy then it will tell us by bleeding and bleeding continuously and then we may have to alert you to go get um, tested and make sure that nothing is wrong and maybe you're just having some prolonged bleeding and maybe we need to back up on how much estrogen that we're giving you so those are both symptoms that can happen with um, patches pills um, and also pellet therapy. So those are just some of the risks, like I said, unless you, if you are um, breast cancer free or cancer free and you don't have any of those things to worry about, um, then hormone therapy, there's really no risk associated with you, just um, side effects, uh, depending on your age of starting. Um, but if you are someone who is susceptible to estrogen uh, receptor breast cancer, you can still have some sorts of uh, hormone therapy, you can definitely do estrogen cream, which if you hear me, I always talk about how estrogen cream is your skincare for down there because estrogen cream keeps the, um, the vagina moist and softened and it helps for women who, when their estrogen is depleted, they start getting, ooh, look at me sweating, when their estrogen is depleted, they start getting um, very brittle um, labia majora and menorah down there. So the skin of the vagina starts getting very brittle. It starts losing elasticity. Um, and women complain that it feels like shards of glass are cutting them. So vaginal estrogen is not systemic, meaning it does not flow through your bloodstream. So it's perfectly fine for anyone of all ages, 18 and over, to use estrogen cream down there, just a tiny pea sized amount, rub it in there. Um, um, one to two times a week, and that's it. And it keeps everything supple down there. But aside from that, if you are um, someone who has history of cancer, you can still uh, get hormone therapy. You just have to go to an experienced provider who knows how to take care of someone in your delicate um, and and uh, warrior uh, diagnosis that you have at the time or that you're in remission from. So I hope this video helps. Please go ahead and um, download my hormone symptom journal, my 90 day symptom journal. So you can track your symptoms to be able to provide that to your hormone provider um, or to me if you can also book a consultation with me if you're interested about how all this works and you want to find help, want me to help you find a provider in your area. Um, to be able to know what you should look for, to be able to know what they will ask you, um, to be able to know how to go to your own provider um, and ask them and how you should go about that. I do do um, calls for that and you can schedule a call below and you can also um, download that symptom journal. And please go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want more uh, information on perimenopause, hormone therapy and how to live your best amazing midlife life. I am out here celebrating my 40th birthday. I am one year um, hormone therapy in, and I feel and look 
my best. So if this is um, what you've been looking for, you know something is wrong, you don't know what is wrong, um, but you know you don't feel yourself and you know you need some hormone therapy, this is what you need. All right, I hope that helps guys. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. And take some time to enjoy the shame. I'm only showing this again for the hundred times because I'm upset. <laughs> Take some time to enjoy the view wherever you are.